Hello everybody, my name is Grace14 and welcome to my virtual classroom. Now, I created this channel to, I guess, teach or help students like me that really zone out during classes and stop paying attention halfway, making them unable to understand things the way they're supposed to. Now, you, with the beauty of me making this channel, is also um, if I forget something, I can just watch my own videos and remind myself of the topic. Now, this is going to be cut into different parts for the first um, topic because it is packed with a lot of things. So you have to pay attention if you don't want to keep watching it over and over again. All right, so. Let's carry on to the first part. Today, I'm going to teach you guys how to use Visual Studio 2019. Now, this is probably going to be the first thing you're going to see when you first fire up Visual Studio. Now, there's a lot of things to look over here. That's like for starters, there's clone a repository, which is uh, something I'll explain a little down the line. There's also open project solution, which makes you which allows you to open a existing project that you've already created which would mean you've already made something is open a local folder you know navigating around to edit codes and whatnot and this is the for, no, if you're really new this is the part where you start to create a new project now if you 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 know if you're already familiar with whatever you get installed just click on create project and there you go so this the beauty of visual studio why i liked it so much is that there's templates for new people to follow you know if you're not aware like and whatnot it's so easy to go through this now because there's so many templates that you can just follow through and you wouldn't need to do it so for people who went through like um javascript or python even yeah Py python's like easy but like the most basic ones are like HTML and JavaScript. You went through, you know, typing it in Notepad or something to display the results afterwards. And yeah, you could do that too here. But the, I really like making visuals already, such as like Dreamweavers is another example. So yeah, we go. We're gonna use Windows Forms to, you know, uh, to create our our. I guess topic of the day which is a simple calculator to use you can use like you could have used JavaScript in this but uh, I only chose Windows Forms because I'm certain that most schools use Windows Forms for for these type of situations so yeah <laughs> yeah you can use Windows Forms and it allows you to do things like uh, data logging, I guess, and making different things, like calculators or whatnot. So yeah, Windows Forms are pretty useful. So uh, all you have to do now is click on Next. Once you're done, you know, with everything, checking out the stuff, and you'll be brought here. You, you know, the you can change your product name. You don't really need to. You keep it default. But you know, I kind of, I kind of like changing it to something whatever I want to. You know. For this example, I guess we can call it activity one, right? Yeah, I guess I, I can call that. I can call it that activity active, active, activity activity one. Don't worry, I know how to spell. I know what I'm writing. See, okay, and I click on create. Now, just leave everything be. You see that not the dot framework on the side. Just leave it be. And uh, creating a new project like this uh, will take some time, so don't worry if, uh, if it stops responding for a second, then completely fine. Um, this usually uh, takes t longer for PCs that uh, have older hardware or something, so all you have to do is be patient, alright? I'll catch you once I'm finally at the, uh, <laughs> the Windows Forms area, okay? Okay, I may or may not have lost uh, 
the audio for this video for this part of the video i'm i don't know what happened i'm so sorry so yeah i um i'm just gonna I'm gonna voice over it okay i'm i'm sorry i'm so sorry okay i i, I really wanted it i i really wanted it to be um be like this you know what I, I don't know I'm so sorry I honestly don't know what what to do at this point so yeah that let's let's get back onto the uh, tutorial I'm sorry I'm just I'm sorry now I'm so sorry <laughs> all right since um I have to voice over it I may sound a little different compared to the rest of the video so yeah I'm still sorry for this okay now as you can see in the background here you can see that I am adding a label and the label is um, if you don't know what a label is I will be extremely concerned for you okay a label allows you to add things in the, in the the project or whatever you're creating allowing you to put text and design your project now to get the label you have to navigate through the toolbox and the toolbox is actually one of the most important things in visual studio because it has all it houses all the tools you're ever going to need now it's pretty simple to add a label all you have to do is put a you hold or left click and drag it out or you can click the screen now what I, what I was doing here was basically explaining that what I really like about Visual Studio is how easy it is to f make the designs and everything come together it's super simple and easy to understand and all you have to do to for ease of use of course you can easily just copy paste the text boxes I mean the labels so you can easily jut things down that you need to put now the other thing that you need to add here on your Visual Studio project thing is a text box now a text box allows the user to give information into the um, the code so it knows what to do and if you've been through JavaScript you would have a similar experience here though if you remember prompt which gathers information from the person or f from the user that's basically it now what I did over here for um, instead of adding another text box i added another label to allow myself to and to allow myself to put the data there and uh yeah i'll explain it i'm pretty sure I've ex i will explain it on the next part anyways and then you go back to the toolbox and grab a button yes a button it's pretty simple you just just like the the label you just hold left click and size it to however you want and then one of the essential things to remember is properties because properties over there is where you have to navigate around and edit the text to whatever you want to it's up to the user to choose whatever they want so yeah i hope i covered everything i can for this part and um yeah okay we're gonna move on to the rest of the video all right didn't think I didn't 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 think uh think it'd stick around, you know. <laughs> so okay, we're for starters, we're gonna be here on. We click on the first text box. I'm gonna scroll down down here till you find design and the name. So I mean, you can just you can leave it as default if you want. But I generally change it to make myself feel better in some regard, okay? Because when you look at a code and it's all in default, you're not really gonna understand which is which, 
until you're actually looking at it one by one, okay? If you think about it, if you labeled it as uh, something like num1, oh, num1, you would know that it's the first number instead of, or you would be certain that it's the first text box. And same rule applies when you click on this one. Where it says text box 2, you change it to num2. Pretty simple, right? And you might be wondering, remember the text box down here? How do you select it? Well, all you have to do is hold left click. Not double click, okay. Hold it. And just drag it around until you reach the general area where the text box was. And let go. There it is, accepted. Now, its design is called Label 5. But we're just gonna call it something like some label. Like that. There you go. Now, you're gonna go to some, the some button. And we're gonna scroll down. Okay. Oh, not scroll down. Uh, uh, go to design and go over here name it something like I don't know add button oh rule of thumb is to uh, capitalize the second word because um, because Visual Studio is actually pretty picky and you really need to put um, that so it doesn't go buggy. So if you notice a while ago it says text box 2. See, uh, there's a capital word there, which is box. So let's move on over here. To do, call it clear button. See? Pretty simple. So far, nothing is hard. Nothing is confusing. And nothing is going on, right? Because we don't have a code yet. Okay, now let's move on to the final part, which is inputting the code. We are on the final part of our code, or project, I guess, which is the code. Now, one thing I forgot to mention a while ago is that the uh, very essential, okay, uh, make sure not to accidentally double click on any of these because this will happen all right this will appear which is normally it wouldn't be yeah like, it wouldn't matter but sometimes uh, visual studio acts up and uh something starts not like something starts bugging out so yeah that's a thing all right uh, th uh don't do it like before changing the thing like changing the like, before you reach this step, just avoid it until you're here, okay? Now, we're just going to go back here and form two. And yeah, same thing applies if you click on this thing. It appears, you know? So yeah, that's a thing. But what you- <laughs> you should really avoid that for the time being, okay? But what you should double click at the end right now is the sum button, which is pretty simple. Which is you just click on it twice and then the, the add button comes out. So you go over here in between it, on in between the two brackets, and paste the code that I left in the description below. Okay? Click on paste. There you go. There it is. Now if you followed my names if you followed my naming scheme like a while ago. It's going to work exactly the same way, and I'm going to explain why. Okay? Now, we're going to move on to the clear button. And all that is, is um, if I remember correctly, is just I'm going to quickly go to my notepad because I am completely oblivious to what I wrote down a while ago. Um, the code. That part is there. You go. 
right. And for the clear button, all you have to do is paste the next code that I left there. And that's pretty much it. Now, for some reason, in my in my version, I have to remove the private part here. That sounds weird. And I remove private from private void, make it to a public void. I'll just change it to a normal void. There you go. And we are basically done. Now, all you have to do is click save. See? It would say that there's an error if there was an error. And that's what's good about um, Visual Studio is that it warns you and then tells you what you did, well, like, it highlights what you did wrong in something. So, yeah. And we're gonna go here to form our, our, our thing, click on start, and it's going to launch our code if we did it correctly. Alright, moment of truth, everyone. Am I dumb? I am not. Okay, so you click on, uh, okay, let's test it out with something as simple like 50, and uh, 50, and click on sum, here it is, okay, and click on the clear button, and click on sum, oh wait no, that's sum, click on here to get our sum, yeah, so we click, let's do something simpler like, one and five click on sum we get six All right see and then we click on the clear button to clear everything pretty simple right now let's move back onto our code over here so i'm quickly gonna explain what each of these do all right so over here the float and the parse thing what this two are doing is basically translating the text boxes, the information gathered from the text box, into a registered variable, allowing it to transform it into numbers, which is now registered over here by the variables to add each other. Ta da! Pretty simple, right? Now, here, uh, the string uh, will talk to the text box that a while ago. The yeah, from the text box and go to the label under it, which is over here, over here. This guy. It's gonna talk to this guy. That hey, I have information for you. So here, display it. Now, once it's displayed, it's gonna show the data gathered from the text boxes all right now for the clear button it obviously just over here all three of them once click once the button is clicked it's going to change is going to change the text boxes into a empty text box okay see it's gonna remove all the information that was inputted basically resetting it that's how simple is it to make a calculator using Google Forms? Uh, I hope you enjoyed and learned something today. Uh, oh, wait, I did not realize that I accidentally clicked on a dash over here. <laughs> it doesn't affect anything. This affects my uh, me. <laughs> So yeah, okay, I hope you learned something today, and if you didn't understand something, feel free to leave a comment, and I will reply as soon as I can, okay? I am... Um, that's pretty much it for today. Catch you on the next one.